Good morning, Robert. How are you doing? Good morning, Reverend. How are you doing? I'm, I'm very well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's strange times. Just a bit different, yes. Just but, a bit. So, Robert, just wanted to reach out with you about where we're at with this whole COVID thing and, and how it's affecting people's lives. And um, So, how, how are you getting on with the whole lockdown, self-isolation, and social distancing, uh, staying at home, and all those things that we've been hearing on the news? Yeah, getting on okay. Um, getting a little bit of work through the business and uh, through the laser engraving. There's a few customers put in orders and then we just leave them out for them. Leave them usually in the boot of my KR and they pick them up. Um, we're sort of halfway through a bathroom. We just started redoing the whole bathroom as this kicked in. Um, so although I'm able to do a fair bit of work myself, still can't get plumbers and electricians and people like that. So, um, yeah, it's sort of take my time and, you know, getting to it okay. Walk the dog and stuff like that there, you know, and things like that. Huh? Yeah. Getting to it okay. We so, bonds. So would you, would you say that the, the pace of life has slowed a little? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it, it was manic um, for a long time there. Um, it just seemed to be one thing after another. Um, but now it's slowed way down, and you sit back and you actually you can you can relax and, and watch nature. Um, Heather, there, my wife, she's very into taking photographs of bugs and stuff and whatever all else. Um, she loves all that, and, and it's it's good to be able to take the time and watch what's what's about you. Um, it's 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 very nice, you know. Yeah, I've saw I've saw some of Heather's photographs on. The, on Facebook and yeah. know, she's, she's just she's really good at taking those and must have the patience of a saint. Aye. Well, she lives with me, of course she has. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't want to say that. <laughs> and, you know, she works, she works with me, uh, the parish <laughs> administrator, so she needs to have those, uh, she needs to have those. Uh, uh, There's good experience with me, I know. <laughs> Um, but you know, there, there's there's tough times with this whole COVID as well, Robert. I I know that you've you have family that are really on the front line, uh, working yeah. key workers, um, and you have a new grandson, and you know you have another granddaughter and grandson, and that, that don't live beside you. And it must be hard not seeing them uh, as much as you this. Yes, it is. Um, Eli and Katie would, would really keep me bright. You know, they, they'd put me in my box very quick. Um, but having Daryl living, he lives right beside us. Uh, I mean, he's working in NE in, in Craig Avenue. He's working with the COVID patients. Um, and then his son's, oh, I'm going to this wrong, eight or nine weeks old. Um, so that's a worry as well, you know, that, that he might bring that back. Um, hopefully not. Um, but you know it's always there. It's always there. And then we have we Flynn out, out right beside us there, and you know you can chat them from six foot away. You know, and it's you know it's not the same. You can't you can't hold them or hug them or anything out there. He doesn't make the same bond with you. you yeah, know? yeah. That's it's not the same as getting a wee cuddle. No, indeed not. Indeed not. Not the same at all. Uh, and and Daryl's doing okay. And I know Philip works on the line as well. So. Yeah, Phillips, he, he works uh, in the food industry and he's on the front line. So he's working with a lot of fellow workers and, and spacing is not always easy. So um, so he's he's in there as well. He's he's monitor and he's trying to keep things right and obey the rules and, and, and still get the get the stuff out there, you know. So yeah. So we'll all of it, all have a bit of meat on the table on a Sunday afternoon, you know. Yeah. And and Jera, of course, is off on maternity leave, so she's yeah. she's at home. And, and Amy is at home as well, isn't that right? Amy's at home. She's furlocked at the moment, so yeah, she's yeah. at home. And Natalie and Dylan, how are they doing? Yeah, they're okay. Dylan's sort of working as reduced as ours. He's down to half days. Um, then he comes home and, and helps Natalie out with the schoolwork and whatever all else has to be done. So, yeah. 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 So the whole COVID thing is something that's not just affecting the chosen few, it's affecting everybody in all walks of life, from the youngest to the, the oldest of society. Um, yeah, it does, yeah. yeah. And it affects everybody. Yeah, and it's not something that's just going to go away overnight by the sound of it either. 
No, indeed not. Uh, it's, it's going to be here for a while. Um, it would be nice if we could get back to church. Um, it would be nice if we could even just get out and about, if we could get the, the bike out again for a while. It would be very nice. Um, but, you know, we'll have to abide by the, the rules and, and uh, get this thing in the past and, and keep it there, you know, and, and, and stop it altogether. So I'm right in thinking that the bike has maybe been out once or twice? Well, you, you know, uh, um, um, it was waning in the garage looking out, you know, but yeah, uh, yeah. probably into the volunteer bikers group. Um, so we deliver um, uh, protective clothing and medicines and stuff right across Northern Ireland. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's essential work. It's, it's, it's helping the vulnerable. It's helping the, the carers and nurses and whoever else. Yeah. Uh, it's just getting stuff to them. Um, so we do all this for free. Uh, we don't charge a penny for it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's nice to get out as well. Yeah. That's good. That's good. And you know, Robert, when we when we're out clapping our hands on a Thursday night, and you know, well, I, I go up and ring the church bell. It's uh, it's not just for those that's in the hospital that's working in the yeah. hospital that we're doing that for. It's for it's for everybody that's in the front line, but it's also yeah. for people uh, people like you who are sacrificially given of themselves to 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 try and help with the whole the whole COVID thing. Uh, lockdown isn't something that's new to you, though. No. Um, yeah, nearly 20 years ago, I was in lockdown. Um, I know some of you watching this probably weren't even born there, but anyway, um, yeah, as, as, as a lot of you will know, I had a bike accident 20 years ago and, uh, found myself, uh, in residence and, 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 uh, I was, I think it was in the Royal Victoria Hospital that I woke up in. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I broke my neck in two places, I had a brain injury, I lost the use of my arm. Um, so, so basically that was a big life changer. Th this COVID is a life changer for us at the moment, um, but hopefully that's only temporary. Um, a lot of mine was temporary, but some of it's permanent, like the, the gammy arm that I have and stuff. Um, so basically for the lockdown bit, um, a year after the accident, uh, a doctor told me that I had never drive again. Uh, he, he told me that because of my injuries, uh, I would never be able to get my license back. Um, so th that that was a hard point. Uh, there was a lot of depression kicked in there as well, as you can imagine. Um, but I can remember sitting up a wee bit of a lane we'll have, you know, <clears throat> we'll have here at home. And it was a beautiful, bright, sunny day. And I can remember feeling sorry for myself. Uh, what am I going to do? Blah, de, blah, de, blah, blah. Uh, but all of a sudden, I, I says to myself, um, I talk to myself a lot. Um, I says, I'm not going to let any man tell me what I can't do. He says, that's up to Jesus. And if he sees it in, in his sight that I get my license back, then I'll get my license back. If not, then I'll just have to live like this. And, and I brightened up and I went back down to the house and I'm sure Helen have wondered what happened to you all of a sudden. Um, but I prayed a gimme prayer. Right? And I prayed that for up to seven and a half years after the accident. Give me my license, give me my license, give me my license. And um, all of a sudden it was the Reverend Boyd. Uh, uh, he said something in church one morning. I don't even know what he said. But I said, you know, I'm praying wrong. And I started thanking God for my license. I was 110% committed that I was getting it. You'd think it was already in the post. Um, and I told him I'll put it to good use. So I went home and I got, to, we had a trike at that time. Um, we got it out of the garage. It hadn't been ridden for years. We got it ready for MOT and got it ready for the road. Went to my GP and talked to him. And he put me through to the, uh, DVLNA, and I went to them. Uh, the doctor had forms to fill out. Uh, I'd done a test with them, I test all the rest of it, uh, and drove a car around Belfast. So, eight years and one week after my accident, I got my license back. So, I was in lockdown for eight years and one week. 
Um, not strictly lockdown, but I couldn't drive. I live in the country, I live in Tom Lamore. Um, if you want to go anywhere, you have to depend on your wife or your father or sometimes even your son, Darrell, who, um, or a bus or a taxi or something, you, you, you know. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not simple. Uh, yeah. uh, but that, that was my lockdown, you, you know. And, and this to me, this is wee bonds because I can get up and I can go for a walk. I can, I can jump on the bike and do some of that volunteer work. I can jump in the car and go to the shop. Mm -hmm. I still have a lot of my freedom, and yeah. which I lost a lot of way back then. Yeah, yeah. So from what you're saying, Robert, it's obvious that faith is a massive, massive part. And of course, I know you, so I know that faith is a massive, massive part of your life. Um, but but how, how is the Lord, how did the Lord help you through that? Okay, you, you prayed, and it was the give me prayer, and then it was the thank you prayer. But you prayed, uh, and you know, you're still, you're still praying, you're a man of prayer. How, you know, how's your, how's your faith, how's your faith helping you now and then as well? It's kind of a double-edged sword on that question, but anyway. Um, yeah, I did pray, they give me prayer, and I would like to say now that I'm a great prayer warrior. I'm not, I'm not a great prayer warrior. I mumble and, 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 and I don't know what to say, but but the Lord knows my heart. He knows what's in my heart and what I'm trying to say. Um, I, I don't come out with all these big words and all and, and, and great sentences of prayer and whatever all else. Um, but he knows what I'm talking about. He knows what I'm asking for. And uh, basically, as long as it's within his will, then that's, that's going to be. Um, you, you talk about going out, out there to do stuff. Um, I just yesterday morning I read a wee piece from the Bible, I jotted it down here. As it was written, for your sake, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to the slaughter. So, basically, you know, if, if anything happens to me now, I've had twenty years extra. I shouldn't have survived that accident. Uh, one of the main miracles of that accident was an off-duty paramedic came upon it, and that man saved my life a thousand times over. Um, surgeons and doctors have told me since that with breaking my neck, right at the top, right up the top, um, I shouldn't have survived that. Uh, but you know, it's hard to kill a bad thing, like you know. Um, that's how I came to faith was through the accident. Uh, so basically, uh, I, I would like, I'd love to say that I'm a great prayer warrior, but I'm not. I'm not. You just pray and pray to the Lord and, and just believe in his will and have the faith that it's going to happen, like a mustard seed. Mm -hmm. Faith there that, that it's in his will. It, it, it'll either go your way or, or he'll think, no, that's not right for you. And, uh, you know, he'll give you a different, a different answer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, G Jesus certainly helps us through, uh, no matter what we're going through. Um, even the most the most difficult times, um, he's he's always there for us and always wants to to help us and and carry us. But we have to let him do it. And, yeah, and that's and that's it really. You, you gotta you gotta keep putting your faith in him, daily, daily. That's right. Every day, every day. Daily. It's okay. Used to be, but before I got saved, I was a uh, you know three three to four times a month church goer. You know, um, turn so up fairly, fairly regular. Yeah, fairly regular. Yeah, regular. Yeah. Um, so uh, you know, do your bit on a Sunday morning, do an hour, and home again, get your dinner, do whatever. You know, yeah. that's you for another week. Doesn't yeah. work like that. No, twenty four seven. Yeah. yeah, that's that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Well, Robert, it's been good to chat to you. Uh, as we keep saying, stay safe and keep praying. Yep. Keep yep. praying and stay safe. And uh, you know, we are praying for you and and praying for all businesses because it's it's not easy at the moment. Like there's not the the feet coming over your your shop door. Um, but but also we're praying for for your whole family and for those on the front line. I think it's, I think it's so important that as believers, 
you know, you say you're not a prayer warrior. I don't think really any of us really are. Uh, but but it's good to pray and, uh, and yeah. we, we intercede for those who are who are working and, and putting their lives at risk um, for to help help other people and. Uh, to you know, the frontline workers, whether it's with the NHS or whether it's working in the food industry or transport or, you know, funeral directors, dare I say it, clergy, even to a certain extent. Um, yeah. You know, we do it because, because of what God has done in us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, anyway, thank you very much, Robert. No problem. It's, thank uh, you. It's always good to talk. It's always good to talk. Good to talk. Good to talk. All right. Thank you.